Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Jarek Bryan Show. My name is Jarek, and on today's show, we have Narfather coming on, uh, which I'm super excited about. They're coming into the uh, Polygon ecosystem, and how are you doing, sir? I am doing excellent today. It's a wonderful Saturday, and sun is shining on the Oregon coast. That always means it's a good day. Oh, Oregon. I, I love that, man. So um, I kind of wanted to ask you, you know, with everything, you guys were, you know, started on so like Solana and everything like that. Uh, what kind of, like, actually... What was your kind of your journey into Web3? Uh, so my journey into Web3 started with a little bit of crypto trading. Um, I, of course, the, the big names, I bought a little Bitcoin, did a little ETH, um, was kind of familiar with Solana, had read a bit about it. Uh, but all of the articles and things when NFTs were really starting to get big were about ETH collections. Um, so I was reading more. Honestly, I read a lot of white papers and got as far as I could mm -hmm. before it lost me. Um, and I saw that there were just so many different ways that this technology was being applied. And that excited me because people were looking at different ways and how we either transact or have fun or how we experience. And each of these new blockchains were trying, were, were looking at solving a potential business need or making things more efficient. And it just got me really excited. Uh, my background is in uh, cannabis and cannabis entrepreneurship. Um, I uh, founded and started a, a dispensary in Arizona in their medical marijuana program. I uh, partnered with a, a big investment group and we opened multiple sites, uh, divested, and I ended up uh, uh, coming up to, here to Oregon and, and still involved with cannabis. I uh, helped to lead them. Uh, to adult use and web three, I saw a lot of parallels to what I had gone through in cannabis of there's not a set playbook. There is rules are changing. Uh, new things are coming. People are willing to try new things and they're excited about it. And, uh, part of that entrepreneur spirit is, well, wait, that's something new. Let me go check it out. Like, like the curiosity peaks and, and it's, let me see if I understand this and let me see if this is something that I can help to improve people's lives or create an amazing experience that they're going to remember. So that brought me to, uh, to be in, uh, in web three on, uh, uh, in NFTs. Um, I made the decision to learn by doing. So mm -hmm. I started uh, an ETH collection, um, came in not knowing anybody, I paid too much for a dev, I uh, had oh, some marketers yeah. that didn't really do yeah. much for me and uh, just, it, it didn't work out. It was a, it was a lesson that I had to learn of, okay, this is a new industry. Yes, I may know a lot from cannabis, but I got to learn. I like, I got to absorb and really see where I fit in this and if this is something I want to do long term. So uh, I, at that point is when I transitioned over to uh, trading on Solana. Um, I was really just uh, digging the, the, the art and the energy, uh, that was happening at the time. Um, I found a bunch of cute collections that I, uh, still hold and, mm -hmm. and friends that I am, uh, uh, still very close with, uh, and expanded out into, uh, doing, uh, some collecting on Polygon as well because of, I mean, this is in fall of 2021 gas fees. ETH was at 4,000 gas fees were like a hundred bucks per NFT. It, it just, it, it was nuts. And so seeing Solana, seeing Polygon about being able to transact and do this without having to like basically pay double of it's, it's just hard to wrap your head of psychologically when you're like, I'm buying something for 0.03 and it's going to cost me 0.06. Like it just, it's, it's hard to swallow that. Um, so I, uh, I saw the L2s and I saw Solana as, oh, this is a different way of doing it. Um, this has tools that are available for uh, people to be able to drop uh, collections uh, without needing the coding background. Um, so that was the point at which I uh, made the decision because my whole team had left me when things didn't go as well as, as uh, they had hoped. Uh, mm -hmm. I relaunched it on Polygon. Uh, very low price just as a v2 uh it's open we've uh, uh it, it is still minting it's just it's there as a fun collection of uh gemstones and uh being able to play with personalities and create stories and and it's uh 
really hit upon of like the importance of storytelling, which is what brands do. They create a story. They they surround their product with here's our origin. Here's what we're here to do. These are our character traits. Here's our values that you're going to resonate with. Um, and it was kind of like a uh, an aha moment of we're getting so much IP and these founders and these collections have created a universe but that doesn't mean that you have to keep that character in the universe when you have the ip you can take bits and pieces you can change it uh change colors uh change things that you have uh in the nft to make it uniquely yours and there are ways to commercialize that through exercising ip but when you say that phrase, okay, exercising IP, like what the hell does that mean? Like exactly. most, <laughs> most people don't know how to uh, utilize and exercise their IP just because they've never done it before. Um, so that is uh, what the reason of why I started uh, NAR AF DAO. Um, it was, I hit upon that idea of I have all of this IP let me share this and create the education and create the platform uh, and this and the opportunity for others to also be able to develop their own brands, share their art, um, and potentially uh, creating additional revenue streams for for themselves uh, with through the power of collaboration and the cooperative effort when you bring people together um we it's uh it's greater than the sum of its parts <laughs> uh and i'm really uh, very excited to see that uh a lot of collections and a lot of uh, uh things that are, where they went to their own dedicated marketplaces are kind of coming back and realizing like let's there's there's more power in being associated with other others that are doing great work and having that connection versus trying to be only look at my product right here like you can't like the, it's it's the tribalism mindset the maxi mindset which of i course. personally when people ask me favorites it's really hard for me to say one mm -hmm. favorite usually i'm like well i like this this and this <laughs> mm -hmm. but uh it's I, I don't know why i have to choose one that's favorite and one that is the best uh it because we were told, okay, well, I like a lot of things. I don't think yeah. that this one is necessarily better than the other has a different use. It's apples to oranges comparison. So uh, um, having that sort of like omni chain mindset, um, that's we're we're chain agnostic as far as in images, um, any blockchain, anything that you got that you have with IP, we're able to use that on hundreds of different items. Uh, we have the staples of shirts, hoodies, hats, uh, jackets, socks, shoes, home goods, phone cases, uh, housewares with like pillows, all sorts of pet products that we're looking at expanding. And we're also making relationships with existing companies that want to make this transition uh, into the crypto space. They recognize that the power of the blockchain and what that is going just how transformative it is in how we conduct business uh, and they recognize they don't know a lot about it and i also have recognized that i always have stuff to learn two oh, years yeah. into this space and marketing is has changed every single day it's it's just things are evolving and you uh a lot of the old ways of how people had done things how you would market how you would try to get that mass appeal it's uh it's it's shifting um and there's more niches that are being created versus that whole mass appeal and that has a lot to do with people expressing themselves and deciding i want to do this for myself and i want to put this out there with either this brand or with uh this product that I stand behind because it's uh, it's a because of the sustainability aspect, because of the the values of the company. Um, 
those decisions are really why we choose to buy one thing over another, whether we know it or not, like we resonate with the values of the company and what it is that they stand for. And there's something about it that we either like or that we want to support. No, and, and, you know, that's great. And that's why I wanted to have you on the show, like and hearing you kind of like talk and what you guys are trying to do, like it is something 100 percent, you know, needed because, you know, when we onboard new people or even like, you know, even people that have been in the space, you know, we always say like, hey, you know, we, we own this NFT, we own the IP rights and everything like that. Great. I want to brand it, but like, I don't know how to do that. Like, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, this is where when you were telling me about it, I'm like, dude, 100 percent right, because like. I like some of the entities I want to brand them. But I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, how, like how, and if you could kind of like explain how do you got, how are you got, how is Narf, how is Narf, Nardow going to help bridge that gap? Yeah, definitely. So, um, and, uh, just real quick, it's, it's NAR AF DAO. Uh, NAR AF there's DAO. NARS, yeah. There's a NARS, NARS DAO. I'm actually supporting them. And mm -hmm. I'm a member as well too. So yeah, no worries. Um, yeah. But, uh, what I what we provide is both it's shown in our structure of our of our project. We are two LLCs. We are fully organized, um, and uh, in order to have that uh, protection for members, you have to be an LLC, and you also need to be, think about mission, vision, values, and origin. So you got to think about of, of just the story of where, where did it come from? How did you come up with the idea? What is your mission? Our mission at, at NARIF DAO is to uh, spread a blockchain art and Web3 art and share it with every town. Because art is culture. We're driving culture forward with these, uh, just the explosion of creativity. And it's beautiful. And the collaborative aspect that's happening in kind of group storytelling and in uh, the community pushing different lores uh, forward are creating the next level of franchises uh, that are going to expand into products, shows, uh, movies, comics, other forms of entertainment. Uh, that is ultimately what, uh, what the brands are, are uh, there to do and what we do to, to help is okay where where are you located what do you need to organize do you need to trademark uh do you need to actually go through and apply for a registered trademark uh do you need a dba uh definitely uh there's decisions in which state to organize uh with the dow we were limited to wyoming and tennessee in the states because those are the two that accept it i chose wyoming because uh they're very uh, pro crypto, uh, and it was a very easy process and it was very inexpensive. So that's why I did, did that. Um, and then I also have the, uh, our operating company that I have set up, uh, for the structure of how we pay for licensing. It's very important that there, it's not passive income. It is licensing payments and market research. So there are actions that I require of my members in order for them to uh, get anything that is not a direct license payment. Um, it's very important on that structure. And that is with IP, knowing that that is what we're doing. We're licensing those rights from you at that time in order to create that image and then sell it. We're not taking those rights from any of our holders. It's you by you being part of the DAO, you have given us the authority to exercise your rights to put it on merchandise. And then we share the profits with the members. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we, we're set up uh, on profitability to uh, share 95% of what we make to go directly back either to the members or to the company. And the company is, is for working capital for us to continue to provide new resources uh, and um, uh, towards marketing and also towards uh, increasing on partnerships, which helps to benefit everybody because when we win, everyone wins. And that is another big part of my mission is I felt that people were not sharing enough in the 2021 bull run, mm -hmm. even in the 2022 wow. uh, and things where people were selling out their collections. 0% was going back to the community in whatever form, even if it's like a community treasury, 
Um, most weren't even doing that. And you go and look at Etherscan or SoulScan and you can see like, yeah, the funds are taken out immediately. And it's like, here, all right, we sold out. You have IP, good luck. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. And that's kind of what uh, it, it just, it rubbed me the wrong way, uh, especially after a rug, because uh, you know that like that was their intention the whole time. But even uh, people that had great intentions, uh, the best of intentions, they made a lot of money and then they didn't know what to do. They're like, what, what do I do with this? Where do I take it? Like, you, you have to have a plan of where you're going to go from there. So um, we're always forward thinking at uh, NAR AF, uh, which is why we are uh, expanding to Polygon. Uh, we have our original collection of 333 NFTs. Uh, so we're a small uh, collection. We have 100 holders. Um, and uh, we have uh, a dozen and counting uh, project partners. Uh, <laughs> so that has been uh, uh, pretty uh, amazing for us as well. Um, so our Polygon collection is going to have new art. Uh, my co-founder, Nightman, is amazing. He's done tons of work in the space. Uh, stuffy bunnies, you know, mining, uh, uh, barracuda. Uh, I know that I'm missing some, but he's, he's just, he's amazing. I love seeing his work. Uh, he's done a lot of stuff with OG Apes and the, uh, uh, the bat traits and, and doing those also. Um, so we're working on uh, new art and... Uh, with this collection, we're also uh, giving our existing holders up to three free. So if they have up to three NFTs or if they buy, uh, basically before we do our snapshot on the 14th, then they are uh, going to get up to three from the Polygon collection. They're dropped to them as long as they register and give me their wallet. So um, I'm doing this as a way to expand, not migrate, create... Uh, basically uh ensure that my current holders are are not don't feel diluted in their uh value um because the goal has always been on a thousand piece collection that's always been the the number and we knew we were going to go multi-chain uh we just weren't sure which direction we were going to go and polygon makes the uh the most sense um both with uh our just relationships um and uh my uh one of my other co-founders cups and his uh, knowledge and connections right. in uh, Polygon. Uh, uh, I'm a v early holder of Deterians and mm. uh, Big Nils, who is Big uh, Nil. uh, it, yeah, he's huge in the space and an amazing human. So it's uh, it feels everything is telling me that this is the right call and this is the right move, and it's the right time because we're coming in at 33 Matic. I mean, at the current cost, I, I, I mean, I don't know what it'll be when this is actually viewed, but it's like 60 cents USD right now. So again, a very low barrier to entry because we win when we all win. My focus is on let's uh, create brands, let's build, uh, let's get your merchandise out there, let's mm -hmm. uh, get a plan of what do you want to do with this brand? Here's the different steps and here's how you build up to it. Uh, here's the AI tools I recommend if you're having difficulty with uh, brainstorming. Set up a session with me um, and come get ideas off of me. Uh, I uh, People uh, pay a pretty penny for my consulting and I'm bringing this to the community because I want to educate and give back. Having a kid changes everything about your outlook on just mm -hmm. everything. And um, I want to give back and make as much of an impact in a positive way to help others because I know that that's going to help the people in their lives, which then helps the people that they're connected with. And those ripple effects, positive and negative, happen. Um, so if I can be an agent for positivity while also accepting the fact that I have a shadow and I can be negative and just, um, that's, uh, I was listening to, uh, and Alan Watts talk about Carl Jung this morning. And that was the, uh, that was the meat of it of you have to accept yourself who you are and not fight against it. If you're ever going to find any level of contentment and true connection, because if you haven't accepted yourself, there's you can't really connect with others um, because you're just putting up a face. 
<laughs> uh, and I know I did it for a number of years uh, because we're all we're socialized and and uh, I mean being a, a man in the modern world of I can show uh, anger and frustration, but that was the only emotion I was able to show. Um, and now things have switched, which I am a huge on. Um, and actually, this was like the, the greatest quote, no, the greatest thing to me that's kind of led me on my uh, both with uh, fathering and just of being a leader of my goal with my daughter is to help to give her the tools of how to manage her emotions not and not manage them as in bottle them but process them in the appropriate way and recognize their feelings and you and that you will you are feeling a feeling you are not that feeling it's a subtle word thing but saying i am mm. feeling sad versus i am sad is huge in your mind because when i'm feeling sad feelings come and go but when you're saying i am sad that's more of a defining characteristic and words and phrasing and shades of meaning all of those things matter and i have <laughs> spent the last three years kind of rediscovering myself because uh, I have a three-year-old, like I said, that just changes your perspective of like, oh, wait, I didn't even realize that I had this bias or that I looked this way or that I cared about this thing. Um, <laughs> it's uh, It's been a wild ride and uh, learning so much about myself and um, NFTs have been like that creative kid outlet for oh, yeah. me. I, I go for cute. I go for silly. Um, mm. I bought a bunch of bunny holes yesterday because they were really <laughs> cute and they were pink and I dug them mm. and they were too matic. So I just... And it's supporting uh, Mochi over at uh, Zom as well. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah, awesome person. I'm going to support. And that's what I love about this space is you connect with people, I mean, yourself of how can I help you? Like that, I think, was like the first thing that you, you said to me. And I love the people in this space that I meet because that makes me want to do the same thing even more so and ask others of just how can I help? Just like, tell me, I'll tell you if I can help or not. I'm not gonna try to sell you on anything. Just, mm -hmm. <laughs> this is what we're doing. And if it resonates, cool. And if it doesn't, I wish you the best of luck. Oh yeah, you know, and I definitely wanna go back cause like you said something like clear about cross chain though, but I do wanna hit this first. Um, you said you came to Polygon, right? You could have chose any other kind of like, you know, blockchains and everything like that. One why polygon and two how has it been so far on polygon that you have been here because i know you're, you're like kind of like fairly new but i've seen you around in spaces looks like you like it though but can you kind of just tell me why and you know um how has it been so far yeah definitely so um i have been a huge proponent of polygon uh for over two years uh my v2 narnar walls are actually on a uh, polygon and i chose that uh because i went through auto Minter and it was ether poly and i didn't want to do mm. ETH because of gas prices but mm. now the reason i'm coming back uh, i'm focused on polygon is because of the relationships that i've maintained through this time of seeing that these are the people that I know are real, that are here to build, that are here to support. Um, and the modular aspect of being able to have multiple blockchains that communicate and roll up, I'm thinking about for both long term of, I want my company to be completely on its own blockchain that has to do with our financials, as well as, um, other aspects of business that you want to have there, you can restrict through keys, but it's blockchain is going to be a part of every single industry in some way or another. And the modular approach, the uh, basically the framework that you can take and expand upon to create it yours. That's what really resonated with me about, uh, about Polygon of, uh, and seeing what, they have been doing over the last year of the, the long-term play like they, they have a long-term vision and you can see that through the connections and the relationships that they're making and it's uh, polygon has just been getting better <laughs> like mm -hmm. I, I remember when you had to do aggressive otherwise it was on your gas fee or it would fail i mean we're only talking about a couple of pennies but that yeah. that happened polygon was so popular that it got uh, very uh congested which 
they responded to, they adapted, and now we have an entirely like new framework that is uh, basically removes that entire barrier, which was the only real like barrier and issue that I I saw. And then bridging, which now is uh, not gonna like what they've done in 2.0 is where they've uh, made bridging and assets and using the native assets, native ETH assets on chain that much easier, which uh, <laughs> Ethereum is the first self-sustaining, uh, profitable system in the history of mankind that we know of. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, uh, I'm trying to remember where I read that article, uh, cause I definitely want to give credit on um, that's not <laughs> my, uh, I think it was a thankless art article to be honest. They do great work. I, uh, yep. I recommend everybody get, get to your, uh, newsletter, sign up for all that stuff, uh, read read and read more um because there's so much cool stuff that's happening and uh you'll find where you want to go and explore yeah no 100 percent. and and you know me and you kind of share like the kind of same sentiment as um you know I, i'm a big believer in you know cross chain you know this pro you know this podcast will be cross chain too i will have like solana cardano arbitrum everything like that um do you think that's kind of like the future that like you know the, some of the projects that come out you know do kind of have to have like that cross chain capability or um, I, I don't know I, I no longer believe in that tribalism though but do you think that's going to be kind of a key thing for other projects to have like that cross chain capability? Yes, as long as it makes sense. If the use case is for uh, a reason, like uh, I'll give the example of uh, Factions just did a uh, mm -hmm. multi multi chain. They were on uh, Solana, and then I think that they also had like four different chains where they're doing PvP battles, and it makes sense of gamers in different ecosystems of why you would want to get that exposure and get because uh, there's gamers in every one of those ecosystems. That makes sense. Um, we're going multi-chain to uh, Polygon because we also are chain agnostic in what we do as far as where the, uh, where the images and where the artwork comes from. But we see the best opportunity for us in what we want to do and set up to where all of the payments, all of, the, all of that stuff is automatic. All of it is handled and is very cheap to be able to distribute and uh, trackable, auditable, all of those things um, is why Polygon makes the most sense. Oh, yeah. No, no. I 100% agree. And like I said, um, with this too, like, so I, I know this is kind of forward thinking, right? I know like, you know, you're focused on Polygon right now, but uh, you're on like, you know, Solana, you know, Ethereum and everything like that. But do you see, is there another like blockchain do you find that's pretty interesting right now besides like Polygon that you may kind of branch over to? Um, I've looked a bit on base. Um, uh, I've done, mm -hmm. I was, I'm on friend tech. I checked it out. I haven't been on there too much. Um, <laughs> I just, yeah, just to be honest. Um, I, I tried Aptos when it came out. Uh, oh, yeah. um, and then I just kind of didn't really see anything that really drew me about mm -hmm. it. Um, I've used a bit of Avalanche and I know that that's uh, big on the gaming side, uh, as well as uh, Cardano, I believe is on the academic side. So they're really pushing on that aspect. So, um, it, we're seeing more specialization. Uh, I mean, we, we saw a lot of that with all of the different protocols, uh, but the ones that are really solving like giant business needs are the, uh, uh, the ones that I see are going to be uh, successful. And I, uh, there's always going to be maxis. Yeah. There's always going to be tribalism just because <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> until uh, I, we as uh, just a global society are not focused on the best and who's the best and got to be the best. Like it's, it's that mindset of why we have maxis. That's a direct result of that. Um, there can be multiple people doing great work <laughs> that are maybe mm -hmm. just like, it doesn't have to be one and then everyone else is down here. And that's how a lot of industries and a lot of business is um, particularly in entertainment. Uh, so the blockchain is putting that power back into the hands of creators and we have a blank slate, the digital realm. It's like opening up a blank word document or a blank Excel sheet or a blank web page of, I can create anything that I want. What do I want to create? What, uh, 
what, what am I trying to solve? What is something that I've run into either in my day-to-day -day work or even uh, just in your everyday life of, of being kind of open and aware of like, oh, wait, there's something that I could do a little bit differently or here's a way that I could apply this technology. Um, and reach out to people. <laughs> it's uh, that that is the uh, the thing that has been most successful for, for me is reach out, say hello, um, be genuine, make sure that uh, if you're telling somebody that you enjoyed what they said, that you really enjoyed it and you want to talk about it. Because mm -hmm. um, the whole point is for you to make connections and relationships with people you want to be connected with. Yeah, no. So that that's great. And, you know, I kind of want to get to this for this part, too, because this was kind of like the um, problem I had when I first kind of got into NFTs, too, as well. Like there was a couple ones that I was like, man, this would be really, really cool, like on a shirt or I can like, you know, like put this out there like on like a like a sticker and whatnot. And, um, you know, everything like that, like, you know, for instance, like like me trying to do that, like how would you like help me? Like how much like percentage off would I get? Like you mentioned that I would get off on merch and things like that. Kind of walk me through like how would you guys kind of help me out on that or any person at that? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So um, with getting one uh, DAO pass, which right now on Solana is 1.5 Solana, current price about $30 USD. Uh, if you want to wait for uh, the Matic uh, and Polygon, we're going to be doing it at 33 Matic. So very, very uh, low uh, barrier. Uh, you become a member. We uh, get with you. And if you have specific items that mm -hmm. you know that you want on stuff, we'll create those. Uh, we have the ability to do that. You can register your wallet and let us be able to pick items from there in order to design just that we kind of want to curate. Um, yeah. and, there, and there's no limits. I mean, honestly, it's uh, let us know what you want to see and what you want to buy and we give 35 percent off of everything that we sell so that's everything that we sell mm -hmm. uh, that is a huge discount and an ability for you to recoup that 30 dollars or, or whatever it is very quickly and then you have the ability for unique gifts <laughs> uh with uh holidays and stuff coming up and things that are people oh. is going to be memorable because of how you made them feel knowing that you took the extra time to go and get something custom made because that's how much the person means to you think about mm -hmm. when you've gotten something custom and just how much it warms your heart and you're able to do it for basically the same price that you would be paying for a shirt in the store like that's our our values are we quality at reasonable prices that is our strategy of coming into the market could we charge more? Yes. Have I seen other uh, print-on-demand things related to NFTs charging more? Hell yes, I have. But I don't want to do that because that yeah. creates barriers of not wanting to use it. And the whole point is let's give this uh, platform for you to exercise it as much as you want to. And if you need to be guided in the whole process... We'll sit down and we'll be like, all right, here's, we'll start at the very top of the brand and start listing about what is important. What does this brand mean to you? Why do you want it to be a brand? And then part of that discussion, you'll find your mission and your vision and, and things, whether or not you have it like in your head of knowing this is my vision, just talking through with it. Um, we can help to point to of like, there's your, there's your vision. Here's your values. Here's what I hear and, and help to develop that part. Because if you're going to come out with a brand, you have to have that already developed and mm -hmm. uh, laid out in your uh, like coming to market. Um, and even before you put anything out there as far as with the brand, because if you don't resonate it with it enough to know that and to spend the time in it, do you really want to spend the time... <laughs> like thinking about this brand and, and what you're doing if you're not really passionate about it no <laughs> um and uh i also say to a lot of people yes there there are uh ways people could go and do this themselves of course you can go and set up a website you can go and manage it you can go pay all the platform fees get things set up uh, customer service all that stuff yeah okay um or you can come with us. We go through collaborative. We share as much as we can. Um, and you have more opportunities for being able to get other products because it's 35% off of everything. 
So that's something we have, I've said, I've communicated to all of my partners and to that that's part of our partnership is come in and our members are able to get that discount off of, off of your uh, products because that is how we take care of our members. That is a very straightforward way for people to grasp of this is how I get what I've invested back, which is not a huge investment. And then I can save on each and every other thing. And it's unique. And I'm going to be known as the person that always comes with the coolest, most unique. Like you can't find these designs and this stuff uh, elsewhere because it's from blockchain. And we're going to continue to push that culture and the uh, the brands and the ideas so people can resonate and find them and rock it and be the one that are rocking that gear. Yeah, you know, that's great. So like, you know, you can, you can put like, you can make like cup shirts and all things like that. Um, you know, and as far as a lot of people don't have like, like time to set all that stuff up. Like you were saying, like a website, you know, do all those things. So it's great that you guys are providing, um, that kind of help though. But also too, let's just say, um, you know, you have a brand, right. And you built it out. Will you guys help with like the legal aspect of like, let's say somebody tries like to rip off your brand and uh, aspect, or kind I of give, give you like you a advice. direction. Yeah, I can point you yeah. in the direction, but I'm not an attorney, so I have to say that. Like, even like I, I draft up all of our docs. I've done that in all of mm. my consulting for years because I just I understand it. Um, but I have to tell everybody, yeah, I'm, I'm not an attorney. <laughs> I give advice uh, of what I've done and what I've seen. Um, I can give you that as long as that with that caveat and. Um, certainly of whether I think that you need to go and talk to an attorney or if this is something yeah. like I can, yeah, th th those, those sort of things are, uh, what I love to help people with. And that's part of what I do in my, have been doing in my consulting, which I still do for uh, cannabis companies. Um, I saw a couple other things that I'm, I'm doing, uh, as well too, in, uh, ag tech and, uh, bleeding edge. Cause I love being on the bleeding edge of what is possible and, creating a future that uh, wasn't there <laughs> before. So uh, I, I, I just, I, I love to, uh, I love to create. I love to see things and then see it uh, come into reality. It's just, it's beautiful. No, you see, and that's great. At least you guys, like I said, you guys are helping kind of like navigate like these waters. Cause this is a very unknown kind of like thing. Like, you know, like kind of like trying to like exercise like your IP rights and everything like that. And that's just great. And uh, you know, I'm glad you guys are actually coming here and actually helping us kind of like solve that problem. But I, I do want to kind of go over. You also you also have coffee, kind of like I'm a, I'm a big coffee head. Kind of kind of go into that. I'm, I'm super yep. interested in that. Yep. So uh, it is roast on demand coffee. Uh, free shipping in the U.S. Uh, it ships worldwide. Uh, it's a little pricier just because this is where our roaster is based. Um, we have six blends that we have chosen to hit all of the uh, different flavor profiles. We've got the, the light roast, the breakfast blend uh, that uh, gives you more of those kind of like honey and walnut type flavors. Um, you've got all of your medium roasts. So you've got those chocolate uh, nuttiness, uh, a bit of almond, maybe a little bit of vanilla in there. Uh, the dark roast is very robust, almost like a t tobacco type taste. Um, that one is a little much <laughs> for me because <laughs> I use a French press. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I And then we have an espresso roast, which I really, really enjoy. Uh, that's the one that I'll do on a, a dark roast. So I honestly, it's the only coffee that, that I purchase. Um, it's uh, roast on demand, ships out super quick. Uh, the bags are $18.99. Um, and again, that includes tax and shipping for uh, in the US. And uh, you can even set up subscriptions if you wanted to be able to get uh, uh, them sent on the regular. Um, if you're a partner with us and you want to do your brand of coffee or you want to do a collaboration and we get a new blend, um, we're uh, going to be doing that with uh, Wolf Punks uh, as well as uh, uh, yeah, another one of our partners, uh, Badgerland Mining Club. So uh, we we also have that available for, for partners who want to create that uh, that branding and they uh, they just added tea. So we uh, we got some uh, new labels and some new stuff that we're going to be adding. Very excited about that of uh, the uh, coffee alternatives. So I've been looking into 
I'm, I'm, I love coffee. Um, oh yeah. I know that. Who does? <laughs> uh, I know that there are some that prefer tea or wants uh, that's that's caffeinated or, um, I don't know. I just have always been a coffee drinker. <laughs> so I knew as soon as I knew it was possible, I wanted it to be part of my project because I love coffee. Like the stuff that I carry is stuff that I would buy. Like the, the designs that I have, I wouldn't put them out there if I wouldn't buy the shirt myself. Mm-hmm. Like that's, that's the whole thing in this is I bought my NFTs because I enjoy them. I'm going to share them and other people will resonate. And that's what's so beautiful about the community aspect is we have such an array of tastes and designs between us. Um, and we're, again, we're at 100 people or 104 last count of uh, holders. And we're certainly looking at uh, gaining an additional 50 to 100 members in uh, with our Polygon Mint. And we're going to grow together. And I'm very excited for the new artwork that I've never seen before. And uh, it, uh, I, there, there's always at least one that I go and dive in further. Anytime anyone submits some stuff of like, here, I want these. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa what is that? I haven't seen that before. Um, and then I find new art that I resonate with in a new community. So it is, uh, it's just really an amazing space that people want to collaborate. Mm-hmm. They want to share. They're not as guarded of like, I mean, I'm still in the other business world where I do NDAs on certain stuff, but it's people want to share more of how, looking of how can I, uh, how can I get involved? What can I do to help you? Um, that is a question that I have this posed and it's just like, whoa, okay. Um, well, I, yeah, this, and then I want to reciprocate back because that positivity and that help and that support makes you want to support back. Oh yeah, you know, like totally. And and you guys got like a lot of stuff though. And you're talking about collaborations. Is there any kind of like alpha you kind of released on some collaborations you have with some Polygon like projects or like there's some that you you hope to work with um, kind of in the future? Uh, Yeah, so we are uh, I can give you the current ones. Um, we are working with Deturians. That is Ooh. a uh, big one on uh, Polygon. Uh, we've also done some work with uh, Crypto Crew Heroes. Uh, so they are our partners. Um, we've done some collaborative stuff with Psydelve. So there's going to be some other things like that uh, happening in the future. Um, and we uh, also on uh, the Collab Center. Yeah, they're multi-chain. They're Solana and they're Polygon. Um, so, uh, we, we have them and other partners on, on ETH side, we have Wolf Punks, Toonies Social Club, uh, let's see, wait, TZ's Nuts NFT, that's going to be on, uh, uh, yeah, that was on ETH, uh, Kong Club, uh, Drunken Ape Social Club that we're uh, doing stuff with, uh, Current Latitude, which is a Web2 company doing amazing things with, uh, hat design and metal plates interchangeable to be able to uh have one piece of uh one one piece of clothing that you can have a hundred different designs and wear a different one and they're interchangeable you can uh they come with magnets uh and it's like ultra 4k amazing resolution and they're awesome guys to work with. Uh, Larry and Josh are, are a father and son team and they're amazing. So it's uh, it's been really, really great uh, working with them. Um, we are very close uh, on uh, dropping and releasing the Bremgoyles site. Uh, so we've been working really closely with them uh, as well as Clown the Clown Town NFT. Um, Crafty Miners is another company or is another project. Uh, Secret Garden of Kadena. I mentioned Badgerland Mining Club. Um, I have more calls lined up next week. It's oh uh, man, you got all the resonating with what we're yeah. It's resonating with what we're doing, and it's about this is the energy I want to bring, and the people. It is so true that you attract back what you put out, and by me putting that out there. The people mm-hmm. that are coming in have that same vision. Like we have our initial calls of, you have to go through and do that. Do I want to be in a long-term relationship with this person? Partnership is, uh, it's it's like a marriage with uh, out the bedroom part. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. um, 
and I've been in good and bad partnerships. So I have learned that how people act when you meet them and through the negotiation process is how they're going to be throughout it. I've had very, very terrible negotiation processes that I just looked past and thought that it was just giving people benefit of the doubt. Turned out to be one of the worst <laughs> partnerships ever that I just wasted a lot of time and effort on it. But it taught me the importance of being selective of who I want to associate with and who I want to spend my time with because there's opportunity cost in everything. So uh, just think about that of where do I want to devote my time? And I want to devote my time to the people that want my help, that are looking to do things for themselves and are willing to put in the work. And I was, I'm actually going to ask you about that. So, you know, projects watching this right now and you know, seeing you and what you're trying to do, like what should they have in order when they come to you for a collaboration or wanting your help? Like I'm talking about projects. Um, like what are some of the things they should have kind of in order to kind of like get you to kind of like help them out and kind of partner up with them? I uh, have an idea of what you want as far as in types of merch. And even if you have sort of just the images and you want to talk through that having that piece, um, we can do design work, but that is something that's outside of the, the, the partnership. The partnership is for us to, we take the designs you provide and we put them onto uh, the merchandise, specific blanks that you choose. I mean, we communicate on price, we co-market all of those things. Um, and we'll do little tweaks and things like that, but design work can take a lot of time. So by having that and knowing what you want from an image standpoint, and certainly if you know exactly which products and make our life like, I want this here and I want this here and I want to make sure it's this material, um, that makes our life easier and it's quicker for us to get the site up. So, um, and be thinking about what are your goals and what is, what is your company about? Um, you don't have to necessarily have it answered. We can have a discussion, but be thinking about that because we put your about your why and also your goals on every page that we make. So it's dedicated as your branding. Um, it shows that you're part of the NAR AF DAO ecosystem, um, but it's, it's your page. So, uh, are your listings. Um, so yeah. And, and just know that there's, there's no limit on the products that you put up. You're not married to any decision you make as far as you put it up. You want to change it? Cool. You want to take it down? Cool. <laughs> like that's the beauty of Friends on Demand. We just, we switch it to draft or archive and then we go to the next product. There's not waste. There's no, nothing that you have to worry about of being, trying to liquidate through inventory or anything like it just, it fits for how I see business continuing in the 21st century and beyond, which is. There are centers, there's going to be people that do things really great. We have brands surrounding them that uh, allow people to, to sell. There's going to be people that are still producing, but the opportunity is there for anyone who has the idea and the creativity to come up with the IP or they've purchased the IP to exercise it. Data is the most valuable thing in the world if you know how to exercise it. Because mm. no, otherwise, it, it, it's just data. <laughs> oh, see, see, and that's great. So, like, projects hearing this, and if you guys are hearing this too as well, um, this sounds like amazing. This sounds like you're kind of like you know, like I said, bridging that gap. And that's why I had like had to have you on here because you just you're solving a problem. That's kind of when I look at these projects, you're solving like a big kind of like problem that I think needs to be solved. But also too, like you guys got got like a ton of merch on your on your website and everything like you already have merch up already and you have and what, what i love too you have a uh, pet merch too as well um are all these are those, all these merch is going to like change when change once you like release your artwork or, or is there going to be more added on like you know like what do you guys have in plan for that always expanding so hmm. uh once we put an item up i uh, there's no space limitations so unless the, the we take it down when the nft is sold We've had that happen already. So mm -hmm. we, uh, we also keep an eye on that and we've communicated to our members of just, if you've submitted anything, you gotta let us know. Um, cause we'll, again, we, we do our double checks on that. Um, 
but we, we put part of that on our uh, members to, to help to ensure. Um, so I just completely lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cool. No, 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 no. But I'm just saying you're adding, you're going to be adding more merch to it and everything yes, like yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, new, we're always looking for new vendors. We're always looking for your niche products, mm -hmm. uh, things that others can't do. Um, we have access to very low MOQs on things too. So I've been developing relationships outside of the Shopify network of people that are sustainable, that are uh, creating those items, pins, guitar picks, keychains, little like stuff like that, that a lot of the big places, they don't do. Um, it's uh, it's limited. I just ran into that yesterday as I was doing some search for keychains and I'm like, oh, okay, well here's, uh, oh, I know man. I have access to do one, but I don't see a print on demand. There are companies that will do swag but it's also like it's okay. What level of quality on the, what, whether they're etching versus printing? There's a lot of those questions that go into that. Um, and if it makes the most sense, I'm gonna tell. Like you come to me and you're like, "Hey, I want to do this," and I'm like, "No, go over there and do it because it's gonna be quicker and it's gonna save you money." Like <laughs> I've always been that type of uh, person. Of I would want them to tell that to me, so I'm gonna say the same thing. That's, that's great. That's that's amazing. I never thought of you know keychains would be be huge though but um you know with, with that said when are you guys looking to actually or i don't know if you can release this just say when are you guys are kind of looking to kind of drop that uh polygon collection uh the polygon collection is coming september 21st yep september so 21st. i have uh we're working with our exchange uh they mm -hmm. are our platform uh, provider uh nightman is already hard at work on all of the art so we've got it all laid out and he is uh uh, we're, we're going over some stuff here this weekend. Um, mm. and, and yeah, we're, uh, we're ready. We, uh, we, we've got everything lined up. Um, again, with this being an expansion, we've, uh, we've gone through and done the stuff on, uh, on Solana. So I know as far as on what we need to do here and the, uh, the direction that we're taking with it. So I am, uh, uh talking with Aura later today. I'm really excited to be their first Polygon collection ever launching <laughs> it's just it's amazing so i am uh choosing those that do things well and they do things very well uh and are going to be able to handle all of our dev needs and nightman is just epic mm -hmm. <laughs> i get to see his process when he's making stuff he shares these sneak peeks and it's it's really really cool to watch <laughs> no man you know like totally and you know um that is great and but let me let me clarify this though. So if I were to get the Solana one, I would get airdropped three polygon ones it's up to three. So if you buy up to three Solana, yeah. you will get airdropped up to three on Polygon. So that is Sweet. the max. You buy one on Solana, you'll get one on Polygon. One to one. Yep. Gotcha. Yep. All right, cool. Well, uh, I want to thank you for coming on my show, but I do want to ask this though. Um, do you have any community members you want to shout out or anybody you want to shout out? Yes, definitely. So I want to give a huge shout out uh, to Nate, Mook Knight, uh, Chris Crypto Urso, uh, Richie, uh, Pups, Nightman, and Big Bear on my team, uh, on the community, Gunner, uh, Bella Buki, uh, Philly, uh, Emilio, Peck, uh, the crypto medic um there i i don't want to forget anybody. <laughs> I, I love you all like uh yeah it's, you you guys know it um uh chelsea and brian and uh um yeah meat man and rhino tough uh tease these uh harry clown town um I, I just had to close my eyes and think about it a bit uh <laughs> wolf punks you, you rock watsy Collab Center is amazing. Just check them out. They're so awesome. Um, I know I've forgotten people, and I apologize. Uh, My heart, you guys know that I love you, and if I forgot, just give me a little bit of shit later. And <laughs> it'll be all good. No, and like I said, hey, and hey guys, he was he was doing this interview while watching his kids, so that's amazing. You know, he's out here working. You know, we appreciate. I appreciate you coming on my show, sir. Thank you for the opportunity, man. This has been great. Uh, Find me. I'm the Nar Father everywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In a, just about every platform I can, I have claimed that. I am the Nar Father. Uh, 
I'm also Caleb. You can find me. I'm fully doxxed. I mean, obviously, this is my face. Like, yeah. I'm me. I'm going to put your trust in me and I'm going to re return it tenfold. If I can leave you with that. Amazing. Amazing. Guys, that wraps our show. If you like content like this, please like, comment, share, subscribe. And I know, guys, you know, I am super excited. I have a monotone voice, so cut me a break. But uh, follow me on X at Hey, it's Jarek. And I'll see you guys around the blockchain. Take care.